Hi y'all, in this video I'm going to address a furore that's arisen in light of Thunderfoot's accusing Davis Arini of being a Holocaust denier, and a lot of people seem to think that Thunderfoot is misrepresenting Davis Arini's views to include some people who are on the rationalists with me, which is why I'm handling this in a video instead of just the comments. So to my fellow rationalists and other people who think Thunderfoot is wrong, uh, you're wrong, I'm going to explain uh, why. Now, either Sargon or Goodfellow mentioned in one of their comments that in one of Arini's videos he says he's not denying the Holocaust. Uh, from my perspective, this is like opening the door and seeing a rape happening. The, the rapist punches the woman or the kid or whoever in the face a few times, puts the knife back to her throat and says, if you resist, I'm going to kill you, and then looks up, you with a, looks up at you with a shitty new grin and said, I'm not raping her, I swear. It's just a guy who's lying about doing what it is he's actually doing, and, and you're falling for it, unfortunately. So if you want to talk about the existence of a thing, um, when, you, uh, when you say that something exists, you are saying that all of its logical necessities also exist. And if you deny one of the logical necessities, you are in fact den den uh, denying the existence of the thing for which those logical necessities are logical necessities, which those logical state of affairs are logical necessities. Um, by the way, the, uh, my fellow rationalists, for those of you who are wondering, they're not denying that the Holocaust uh, happens. They're not defending Arini. Uh, they just think Thunderfoot's gotten carried away. Anyway, so Arini says that it's just false that there is any Nazi plan to exterminate the Jews. No, there was any Nazi plan for this kind of, of thing. That in and of itself is denying that the Holocaust happened. So what do we mean uh, when we what do we mean when we talk about a Holocaust? No, well, generally. The mass murder of Jews under the German Nazi regime during the period 1941 to 1945, uh, more than 6 million European Jews, as well as members of other persecuted groups such as gypsies and homosexuals, uh, Bolsheviki, academics, uh, Democrats, all kinds of people were hated by, by the Nazis for various reasons, were murdered at concentration camps such as Auschwitz. Another dictionary, uh, the systematic mass slaughter of European Jews, a better definition, uh, of Nazi, uh, in Nazi concentration camps during World War II, usually preceded by the word the. In other words, we're talking about the genocide of the Jews and others. Now, there's wiggle room here where you can talk about, uh, well, was a person who wasn't a Jew but who was thought to be a Jew and it was killed in this, I mean, how do you classify that person? This answers the, the statements of someone like a, a Hermann Goering saying, I decide who is a Jew. I'm pretty sure not everyone he said that person is a Jew was, in fact, Jewish, but how do you label that death? There's room for disagreement over that. There's room for uh, argument over the, the precise numbers. But what isn't open for disputation, at least not on the evidence put forward by the other side, is that the Holocaust did happen. But anyway, um, so systematic mass slaughter, and then we're talking about a genocide. So a genocide is the deliberate and systematic extermination of a national, racial, cultural group. Uh, and it doesn't take a great deal of research to figure out that the word systematic means done or acting according to a fixed plan or system, methodical. Its synonyms are... Uh, structured, methodical, organized, orderly, planned, systematized, regular, routine, standardized, uh, standard, things of, of that nature. So it would be nonsensical to talk about just uh, a, to talk about a genocide that happened that wasn't planned. You can't accidentally genocide. You can't accidentally organize the mass slaughter of lots and lots and lots of people. Now, Orini uh, doesn't deny, at least uh, such that I take it, he doesn't deny the existence of all these dead people. He just uh, posits that there are alternate explanations, famine and disease being among them. Um, so, if, if you walk into a room on a smaller scale and you see one living person and one dead person, from that, that bare fact alone, you can't infer that the person who is alive killed the person who is dead, let alone murdered the person who is dead. I mean, he could have killed them, but it could have been a self-defense. Uh, the, the person who is dead could be... Uh, it could have been suicide, it could have been natural causes, old age, starvation, disease. It could have been murdered by someone else. Uh, so it's not a, a logically necessary inference to draw the fact that one person is dead and one person is alive near them, that the person who is alive has killed the person who is dead. For example, uh, cops, you don't automatically infer that they've murdered the person or killed the person if you see the two in a room. Uh, a doctor, a paramedic, you don't automatically draw that inference. A pathologist, you don't draw that inference. So it's logically permissible for a person to be dead in the room with another person and for those two facts not to be in related in any causal sense with relation, relation to the person's death. Now, 
No one would, would give me a pass. No one would think that it's exculpatory if I kidnapped a child, locked it in a room, and sealed off all the oxygen, sealed off all the air outlets, and then the child suffocated. No one would think I would be exculpated if I stood up in court and go, well, I didn't kill the person. Uh, it just, it suffocated. Uh, no one would think that it's, uh, it, I would be exculpated if, uh, if I, you know, same people, I don't know, maybe an adult this time, I locked them in the room and then I didn't feed them for months until they starved to death. So when someone like Arini says there are these other things that are, that are explanations for all the corpses that are really hard to deny exist, he brings up famine. This doesn't exculpate the Nazis in particular because of things like uh, Plan Oldenburg. If you want to know more about it, look up something like Goering's Green Folder, which was brought up, argued about uh, during the Nuremberg trials. It was part of Operation Barbarossa, the invasion of the Soviet Union, to engage in what was called Plan Oldenburg, which was starving millions and millions of people to death. They, they estimated they could starve to death tens of millions of people in this way, and between uh, the summer of 1941 and February of 1942, uh, they had managed to starve to death 2.5 million Soviet prisoners of war and Soviet Jews. Now, the starving to death of people is a little bit harder than you might think it is. Oh, by the way, um, some of them were direct. They locked them in camps and just didn't give them food and starve them that way. And then uh, others were, were more indirect. They made it unlawful for Jews to buy uh, milk product, dairy products, uh, animal products, wheat, you know, vegetation. Just, essentially, they made it unlawful for them to buy pretty much all kinds of food. It should therefore not be any great... Uh, in, in any great realization to figure out that as a result of that many of them died from not having food. They also made it illegal for people to, to sell them food or to provide them food. So I guess whatever they couldn't just uh, scrounge up on their own uh, was given to them illegally or anyway. Many, many tens of thousands of people died that way. Millions uh, died that way. Starving people to death is not a viable logistic, a, a viable uh, method of execution or killing them. In all parts of the, the land, it's, hard, it's easier in some places to, to sequester people away from resources. In other places, it isn't. And in other places where they couldn't just cut off uh, food lines and starve people to death, they took more direct mean, They took more direct methods of execution. Now, in, in, um, one, one of the guises under which this, this kind of conversation can happen is not a particularly useful one. Of course, it, it's easy to say, and it's true, that, oh, I just want to hear the facts on both sides of an argument. So do I. Uh, but one, one side will have like this whole body of historical records and another group will have like this, oh, well, what about that? And here's this con uh, conspiracy theory and, and then just a, a mass of out and out lies. Uh, to take one from uh, the comment section of Goodfellow, I think it was, one guy brought up the, Red, uh, the official Red Cross position is that uh, it didn't happen. Now, this, this uh, false narrative, even decades after it's been proved to be false, is still being, uh, still being perpetuated even today. And it's very easy to say that that, that is so. But, you know, 20 years ago, the International Red Cross released 45,000 microfiche uh, sets of documents. It was like 60,000 documents in all, documenting their observations of like, these killings, these conditions, uh, and, you know, coming clean with their, with their being complicit in the Holocaust. Uh, tens of thousands, 60,000 documents released that, that, that uh, demonstrate their, their being complicit in this. Uh, are you going to read all 60,000 of those? I'm not going to read all 60,000 of those. You're not going to read it. 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 It's very easy to make the claim that it doesn't exist. It's a lot more work spent um, uh, trying to show why that claim is false. But here, here's the, the, the juggling that goes on. So the one guy says the official position of, of the Red Cross is X. The Red Cross says their official position is Y. Trivially easy to notice that any time there is discord between what the Red Cross says its own position is and what anybody else says the Red Cross' own position is, it's very easy to say the Red Cross the Red Cross's statement of its own position sweeps the field, occupies the field, dominates all others. Anybody who claims anything otherwise is making a claim that's inconsistent with the Red Cross itself says is its own position. Now, whether that position is true or false requires more work. This is where reading the documents comes in. So the guy in response to that says, well, their documents still show that this is, so that's really their position even if they have rhetoric that says otherwise. 
So now you've got to go read tens of thousands of documents that aren't in English. So you've got to find a translator to translate them for you, where they document tens of thousands of executions. They document in painstaking detail their their interact their uh, complicitness uh, in in Nazi propaganda. They they explain why they did this so so they could remain neutral, uh, so as to fulfill their mandate, which back at the back in the day was to gain access to prisoner of war camps to make sure that prisoners of war were receiving the right kind of treatment. The Jews who were being you know, exterminated weren't prisoners of war. So it's unsurprising that when you go to a prisoner of war camp where exclusively prisoners of war are being held and being treated in one way, then that's not going to tell you anything about what's going on in other places. But it takes minutes and minutes and minutes to respond to just this claim. The Red Cross uh, says XYZ and it would take hours to go through this litany of evidence. Now anyone who's wa who watches debates knows that you'll have a fixed set of time. Go, go watch um, testimony before legislative bodies. This time limit will be used by, by people who are very good at this kind of thing as a tool to shut up the opposition. So if, um, if I'm the senator who doesn't agree with the witness all I have to do is say hey look Look, guy, I need simple yes or no questions here. I've got five minutes, which my talking cuts into, and so too does your talking. Uh, so I'm going to ask you a question. When you start to answer, I'm going to interrupt you and say, no, 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 no. And then do that until the time is played out. And then the next person who's on the same side as a witness, or at least agrees in part, will try to rehabilitate that. And the cycle repeats. Then all you wind up getting in the news is sound bites. In order to figure out what was actually said, like I come up, I come up with this kind of argument, this kind of nonsense when I talk about gun rights in the United States. And I'll be like, well, if you go watch the Senate hearing, uh, well, I'm not going to do I don't have that kind of time. Yeah, it's hours and hours and hours and hours of having to watch this to figure out what the sides are and what was and wasn't actually shown in that whole very long, very, contra you know, very charged conversation. And people simply aren't going to go put that kind of time into it. So all you're stuck with are these kinds of of uh, sound bites. The Red Cross says that uh, this shit didn't happen. Really? The Red Cross says that it says that it does. Well, if you actually go read their documents, their documents say exactly what I say they say. Their documents say exactly what they say that they say, but nobody's going to go spend time reading 60,000 fucking documents that aren't in English to figure this shit out. So yeah, it's, it's all fine and well to say that I just want to hear what this side has to say and what that side has to say. The problem is that the other side of this argument doesn't have a body of evidence. You, you want really quick, fast evidence. You can go watch short documentaries uh, or you can go watch stock archival footage of this kind of thing happening. Even before the Allies got there, I mean, this was not like a big secret in Nazis, among the Nazis that this show was happening. You can go look at their documents. But no one's going to spend that kind of time. There are people whose careers their entire professional lives are spent examining just this shit. It's very depressing, very time consuming. So if you really want to compress it, look, you have the accusation uh, shorn up, uh, sh I'm sorry, shored up by the records kept by the Nazis themselves about this and that and the other. Now, of course, you can always have an argument about they over, you know, the, the subordinates were over, over uh, exaggerating the bad shit they had done to please their masters. But the bottom line is this, you had a, it had a regime that wanted racial purity, it came up with these camps, it's undisputed they had these camps, it should not at all be remotely controversial to make the very small leap in logic that goes from that to, yeah, they wanted to do this, they had all the camps set up to do this, they had the means, they had the mechanism, they had the motive, it should be completely uncontroversial to draw the conclusion that they did, in fact, manage to pull off quite a lot of these murders, quite a lot of this extermination of people, particularly when they, they documented it so painstakingly well, and not anyone on the other side comes up with substantial work that calls a substantial amount of this into question. You can, you can pick nits all day long. You're talking about the deaths of many millions of people. Oh, well, it's, not, it's not that many millions. It may, you know, it's a half a million shaved off here. Oh, fine, you know, I'll grant you that half million, or I'll grant you a million here. The, the point remains. Millions of people were exterminated by the Nazis, many of them because they were Jews, and many of them for other reasons. So you can quibble about all kinds of details, but the one thing you can't really quibble about, and there's no, there's no significant reason to even raise an objection to this, is that the, the, the Holocaust actually happened. There's not a good argument on the other side. So anyway, uh, that's a, the latter part of this is a bit of a, 
a detour from the beginning of this. I'll rope back to that. Arini does deny the Holocaust, even though he says, I don't deny the Holocaust, in the same way that denying that there's an oxygen source is denying that something's on fire, even if you say, I deny that I'm saying it's on fire, in the same way that if you walk into a room and see a man punching a woman in the face, holding a knife her throat and saying, you know, if you resist, I'm going to kill you, you should not believe him when he looks up at you and gives you that little shit-eating grin and says, really, I'm not raping her. Honest. You don't have to believe lies. You shouldn't believe lies. Listen to the arguments people make, not the rhetoric that they have saying uh, later on about what they did and didn't, uh, what they do and don't mean. The only way for Arini to backtrack from that denialism is to actually say, I was completely wrong. There was, in fact, a Nazi plan to pull this off, and indeed they were, in significant part, successful. Not just to say, well, I'm not denying the Holocaust. That's cheap rhetoric. Anybody can do it. Anybody can tell a lie. His explicit argument is that the logically necessary predicates didn't happen. If the logically necessary predicates didn't happen, the event didn't happen. That's, that's the long and the short of it. Have a great day.